Wrestling fans, freestyle season is just around the corner. And if you want to wear the same singlet that Kyle Dake, Yanni D, and Vito wore at the 2021 Olympic Team Trials, you can do that now by going to SpartanCombat.com and shopping their extensive list of freestyle singlets, and specifically the U.S. Trials Limited Edition Singlet Combo. Check it out now on SpartanCombat.com. Don't back down to nobody, man. Like, just go and force your will on them. And, you know, that was the, the best thing I could say, too, and is, hey, man, one match at a time, like I'm saying, man, I never wrestled the kid, the right guy. You know, the guy was supposed to be in the state finals. So you can't look ahead. We can endure anything and adapt and pivot and change. Wrestling gave us that ability. I would say nothing in life has impacted me more than the things wrestling has taught me in terms of self-reflection, resilience. Toughness. Some guys have it, some guys don't. Adversity, 100%. How to pick myself up and be a man after I failed. And everything that has shaped my life and where I'm at today would not be there without the values and basically the, the lessons I've learned through the sport of wrestling. For me, wrestling saved my life because it, it allowed me to focus and channel my energy. We're fortunate if you wrestled because if you wrestled, natural talent helps, but it's, it's 5% of the ingredient. It pales in comparison to heart and technique and effort. It humbled me, taught me humility. Nothing can hit, humble you more than wrestling. I think it's the learning to adapt, right? You learn, you learn how to adapt, you learn how to solve problems. You know, if I look back at my time, that's good wrestling. If it gave me one thing more than anything else, it's mental toughness. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Wrestling Changed My Life podcast. This is your host, Ryan Warner. It's the eve of the great Illinois high school state wrestling tournament. One of the most exciting weekends in Illinois wrestling. And in honor of this epic event taking place tomorrow, I felt it was only right to bring on one of the Illinois GOATs, Joey Gilbert. Joey was the first four-time AA state champ ever. AA is the big school division. Joey won his first state title in 1986. He won in 87, 88, and 89, and put together a 161-1 high school record in the process. In college, Joey wrestled for Michigan. He was a two-time All-American and had some epic bouts with Tom Brands, which you can find on YouTube. But in the meantime, folks, enjoy this interview with a true Illinois legend, Joey Gilbert. Before we get there, fan of the week goes to one of my old high school coaches, Jesse Montez, and his two boys, Anthony and Zachary, who are competing this weekend at the state tournament. Good luck this weekend, boys, and good luck to all who are wrestling at the Illinois State Tournament this weekend. This episode is brought to you by Spartan Combat. As soon as the state series is done, make sure you register for the Spartan Combat Nationals taking place April 8th through the 10th in Jacksonville, Florida. Register now at SpartanCombat.com. And that's it, folks. Let's get to the interview with the great Joey Gilbert. Joey Gilbert, welcome to the podcast, sir. Uh, Thanks for having me. It is an honor, man. Growing up, always heard the name and, you know, we've gotten to know each other about 10 years ago and good to have you back on the podcast. For non-Illinois people, this is the week of the Illinois State Tournament. It holds a special place in all of our hearts. Just when I mentioned the name, you know, IHSA State Week, what kind of emotions and feelings come to mind for you? You know, mostly excitement, you know, and uh, that was mostly, you know, I think, it's exciting, you know, since, you know, I've always been watching the state final since like sixth grade, you know, and I always want to be part of it. And, you know, when making it down, it's, it's exciting. It's a super exciting state uh, championship. Because, you know, I see, you know, I went to college with some of my buddies and you watch these videos of their state championship. It doesn't have the same pageantry as, you know, no my state wrestling uh, championships have. And you said you were going down since sixth grade. Was it going down to watch your brothers or just the IKWF club you were in took you down to watch? Well, it was, well, we all went on our own. We, I mean, a kid on our team's brother was going to University of Illinois. And I'm like in sixth grade. We just went down there, stayed in some guy's dorm room, you know, Brian Elon's dorm room, and, you know, just wanted to watch the state championship. You know, we were just running around the town watching wrestling. Nice, Not man. too much supervision going on. Well, you know, we're going to get to a, you know, get to the state tournament and uh, your run there and 
you know, the, the, the one year I could have sworn you were going to wrestle Bormet, but then William Gay throws him in a headlock. Just one of the craziest situations that ever happened. But let's go back to the early days for you. How'd you get started in wrestling? Uh, I started like in fourth grade, you know, and, uh, my, you know, my older brother G was a really good football player and like, you know, and baseball player. And, you know, people are like, well, you know, why don't you join wrestling? You know, if you're such a great athlete and I just remember my mom, take me, take me with me to sign my brother up. And, you know, and I was standing with my mom and there was a takedown tournament going on at the man. Joe Tho asked me if I want to anticipate. And so I started to anticipate, you know, I kept, you know, taking people down and all I was using was pretty much just a football double, you know, football tackle. Cause I started football three years before that. And then, you know, I ended up getting taken down and then, you know, I went and set it against the wall. Then all of a sudden they called me over and they said, you won the takedown tournament. And I'm like, man, I got really excited about it. I'm like, no, no, this could be a sport for me. And then from there, talk us through your early years in the IKWF. Did you, do you have some lumps or did you roll kind of th- straight through it? No, I didn't really understand wrestling that much when I first joined it. You know, I thought you had to pin the guy, you know, just like, you know, watching, you know, WWE, you know, and then you know, I lucky my dad wrestled. And he's like, no, man, you know, you got to be out there scoring points. I'm just trying to pin the guy. And that was like <laughs> more fourth grade. And then fifth grade, I kind of started to understand the point system and, you know, I, you know, I went downstate, you know, I, I started in fourth grade and went downstate in fifth grade. Well, you know, I just started to, like, you know, just understand the sport and understand the takedown aspect, the riding aspect. So from there, you know, I went downstate as a fifth grader. And then, uh, I mean, that was kind of tough, too, because I had to wrestle my older brother go downstate that year. I was in fifth grade. He was in eighth grade. You know, that's when they only had one division. Whoa. And you had to wrestle him at the sectional? I had to wrestle in the regional championship and the sectionals for third and fourth. Oh my God. It's so people don't realize just how structured and organized the IKWF was way back then. Now there's a lot of states that had their organization, but in the eighties, like you said, it was one division and everyone's going down to Springfield for that state tournament. Yeah. You know, that year I think it was actually held at Harper college. Okay. And then the following year I'm thinking to Kelb. You know, but yeah, so I went down as a fifth grader and then sixth grade, I ended up winning state. I didn't win a match at all down my first grade year at all. So sixth grade, I went in seventh grade. I took third, eighth grade. I won it. And were you on the Tinley Park Bulldogs? Yeah, I was on the Bulldogs, Pioneers and Bulldogs. So, okay. Yeah, I'm doing a, uh, as we speak here, I'm, I'm wrapping up a Tony Davis documentary and he was a little bit later than you had, but the Steve Williams era and like Terrell Sandiford's, was that after you or before you? Well, Sandiford's while I was in college, cause he was at, I mean, I'm in high school, sorry. And, uh, Steve, no, my brother would wrestle Steve Williams. So I know Steve Williams real well, you know, and Sandiford also, you know, Thornton. So we would wrestle those guys a lot, you know? In the rocket tournament, dual meets. So I know those guys real well. Yeah. And I remember when the Harvey Twisters came around, you know, it was like how fast they got good and, you know, it was crazy. Like just like uh, in a couple of seasons, right? They, they weren't even really that well known. And then next thing you know, in 86, 87, they're, they're right there. Yeah. I'm thinking like it had to be like my seventh grade year. And then all of a sudden my eighth grade year, these guys are competing with everybody, you know? Yeah. It was nuts. <laughs> some of those teams they had back then were ridiculous and uh you know another name from your era that you know it comes to mind i mentioned it earlier is you know sean bormet was he in your kids club or were you aware of him growing up no i know sean since well you know i had this coach named mike stuck but he knows everybody you know like kids wrestling and so you know anyway it was good he talked about it. but sean wrestled for the I can't remember when the first club he wrestled for was the Mokina team, but then he, you know, his dad started Frankfurt Falcons, you know, Got it. and uh, you know, Frankfurt is pretty close to Chimley Park, you know? Yeah. So, so I always knew who Sean was, you know, and I know he was, you know, this real outstanding wrestler. And then, you know, he used to wrestle like Jim Tchaikovsky all the time. And we were like similar weight. And I'm pretty sure I think Sean might beat me in my th- fourth grade year you know at regionals you know i don't know exactly but i knew who he was you know mm-hmm. i didn't know how close you guys were if you were training partners no we didn't really start working out together until college got it yeah oh go blue baby and uh you guys end up there and 
And before we get to that, though, you know, your freshman year, IHSA State, two classes at the time, right? Yep. 1A, 2A. 1A and 2A. So you're in, you're in 2A, the, the big school division. 1986, you're going into Assembly Hall for the first time. What memories do you have of just your first trip down there? I think just, you know, like go, going through like the wrestling area where you get through and then just coming through that first tunnel and just seeing all the kids on the mat. And all the mats on the gym floor, you know, on the basketball floor, I just got like, hey, man, this is, this is great, man. This is, you know, exciting. And, you know, that's, you know, like I said, I want to say, you know, like I said, you get excited about it. And there's just an awesome feeling and awesome view, seeing all those mats and those kids in this crazy stadium that, you know, I never got to wrestling before. You know, I've been in it, but I always wanted to wrestle and I'm actually wrestling in it. Why do you think some people like you get excited and others get nervous and, and maybe clam up in that kind of environment? You know, I think it's just like, it's, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of like the limelight, you know? So, and then some people don't like the limelight. I do. I like, I'm not going to say, you know, I mean, I like showing off and I'm not going to hide it. You know I mean? I like being a competitor, you know, I like being out there. I like people watching me, man, wrestle, you know? And I think, I mean, what's the crazy best time of year? Like all year, you know, we, we always had great support at our high school, you know, for dual meets and everything. But, man, what's, you don't get too many chances in your life to wrestle in front of 10,000 people, you know. I mean, I remember going my first NCAAs in uh, uh, College Park, Maryland. I don't think it was even that many people there back then, you know. I mean, it was just exciting to have all those people, you know, watching you, you know, wrestle. Yeah. And just knowing all of the storylines and all the drama, you know, dating back to the IKWF and kind of following that in and uh was your when you were when you were a freshman was that your brother's last shot then at, at placing and, and getting a medal well my little brother yeah because like he was only 79 pounds going into high school my brother g so he didn't really wrestle much and then he wrestled his sophomore year you know and then junior he lost to a kid named dennis to shane for uh, going out of state at 126 and then senior year i got i come to high school I go 126. He cuts down to 119. So, you know, and then, you know, he makes it downstate. He doesn't place, but, you know, I think that's one of my motivation going to say final because he, he he was in the last round. And if he wins that match, he takes, he actually would have took an automatic fifth because Murphy ended up forfeiting. You know, he's winning, I think, 12 to 10 and never in his life ever puts the leg in. I just remember sitting up there in the stands and he gets put on his back and ends up losing by two and doesn't place. And, you know, that's right before I got to go wrestle the state finals. So that was something that resonated deep with you, just kind of watching that all unfold. Right. And I think that's an actual motivation, you know, it turned some disappointment in the family into more, you know, something positive. And when you were, you know, you were down in the tunnel, you know, the grand March happens and it's, it's one of the great spectacles of wrestling. And, you know, are you someone who, before you're going out there, you're kind of running through your attack plan, or, or is your mind more of like a clear Zen mind? No, I mean, it's, you know, you're totally more in a Zen because you're putting yourself in that spot. And, you know, and I'm going, and then, you know, and I still tell my wrestlers too, like, you got to know what you're doing before you step out there, man. You got a game plan. You got to know what, what setup, what takedown, what stand up, what breakdown, you know? And that's what I'm going into, you know? Right, man. Right, exactly. You put yourself in the zen, you know. I'm a big guy on that, you know, big believer in that. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm a big Brad Warren fan. If you know who he is, a big Zen guy, you know. No, so, tell me no, what's his what's his pro process? I, Brad Warren is well, I, I'm really into punk rock music and being a punk rock, and I grew up as a punk rock kid, and he took Zen and puts into a punk rock style, you know. I send you the books. I mean, I show you tell you what an hour later. You yeah, know, what you know, ones I'll you know, sit down and shut up. You know, punk rock zen, stuff like that. You know, he's a cool guy. He's from Ohio. I mean, he's an East Coast guy, but he went to school in Dayton. And, you know, he just writes, mostly his Buddhism comes from punk rock. You know, he's so I can really lay with it a little bit better, even though Got I it. really enjoy Buddhism and all that stuff. But it's pretty cool how he writes it. Is that something you were cued into back then, or you just kind of found it later in life and it, it was vibed with what you were go going with? No, you know, I mean, I, I was in a little bit because I was really, you know, really into like anything like alternative arts and, you know, so I was in it a little bit, you know, but 
I think this is my, but my high school coach, in a sense, I think a lot of people have like, you know, a lot of those logics and theories without saying what it is. You know, my coach always kept me in the now, man. Yeah. Hopefully. He was good at that, you know, keeping me in the moment, man. You know, like really kept me that one match at a time mindset. Well, I didn't really, I felt like I had it in college, but he really had that mindset for me, you know, never looking ahead, just enjoying the moment, you know. And that's why, I'm, you know, I would tell any kid going out of state right now, like every match is a state championship match and, you know, go out there and, and enjoy that moment, man. Put points up and wrestle. Yeah. And I mean, you, uh, you coach for, for a number. I, I remember you marrying Catholic, but I mean, you, you coach guys down there, you wrestled down there, you've been down there a ton of times and that, uh, that philosophy that coach Leahy embedded something that still rings true. Oh yeah. You know, I took a lot of, you know, you know, a lot from his coaching, especially in high school, I used, you know, a lot of the same methods and training methods that he used, you know? Yeah. And this and keep, I'm oh, sorry. No, no, go, no problem. Go no. ahead. Oh, that, oh, that was it. Well, I was just going to, you mentioned college and, you know, we don't have to go in chronological order, but, you know, I was just looking through the, the college brackets. What kind of a pull was it for you to get down to 134 all those years? Was that like a tremendous strain on you or was it, did it come off pretty good? No, it killed me, man. I mean, probably, you know, maybe get away from wrestling a little bit. I know, you know, it was, it was a struggle. I mean, I was, you know, I was walking around 185 pounds in all season. I mean, no. that's probably a lot of my fault, too, you know, drinking beer and eating McDonald's. I wasn't on the ground. <laughs> you know? But, you know, I was really lifting until like lifting weights, man, lifting heavy weights, too, you know. Yeah. You know, on the bench, like 400 some pounds and squat. You know what I mean? I was into that stuff, you know. I'm from the South suburbs and like, you know, we're big into lifting weights, you know, yeah. bodybuilding down here, man, you know, and like, you know, I go to Gold's gym in the off season and I go to USA gym, man. It's hardcore gyms, man. And that's what I was into. I was just really not wearing, you know, this, I mean, oh man, if I, I, man, I think what's killed me the most is not learning how to, the right diet and doing, you know, eating the right stuff after weigh-ins, man. We're eating like crazy stuff. Even like in high school, we sub, sub sandwiches from white hand and you know no <laughs> nutrition wise man and then, you know i started listening to, you got tom brands on and ter- these guys are like all tuned into that stuff back then man that was like <laughs> not, i didn't even understand any of that stuff man like the difference on what like uh like a guy like david taylor eats after way and now versus what you guys were doing back then must be cr- night and day oh yeah man we're eating potato chips man you're making a list of night before i'm gonna eat this eat that I remember my sister did the same thing. She got into wrestling later in life, and I, and she was less than Toledo in the World Cup. And I looked down; she's got a whole list of things she just wants to eat. You know, <laughs> no, no, good with gummy bears and stuff. You know. So what? What weight did you wrestle your senior year of high school? Uh, one thirty-five. They switched the weights that year. One thirty-five. And so yeah. going into college, were you thinking you'd be like forty-one somewhere in there? You know. I think, you know, I think what happened to me is like, I was not, I, I, I mean, I always rust walked around like what, 145, 150 my senior year. But, you know, I think, I, I think overall, and, and I think a lot of people don't talk about it, I think when I started to become like 18, 19, you know, I, I, I struggled with my weight. I really did, you know, I started to get heavier, you yeah. know, you know, and I think, and, you know, I don't think I had the greatest eating habits either, but, my body started to get bigger, you know, and I don't know how Purdue wanted me to wrestle 126. Oh, because, my God. Yeah, but, you know, I did do, I think, oh, man. Oh, man. I want to say as far as, I don't, I can't remember exactly the three and a half, but I want one year, I think my junior year, I wrestled like 132 and like cut down to, I can't, 125 for the freestyle for college match. And I was still in high school, you know, I could, you know, but I wasn't that heavy back then, you know, and I could run and yeah, get down there. But I, in college, I think I started to struggle. I think the weight, you know, and I never, you know, I think that's a lot of things, but like some people just start getting bigger, you know? Yeah. And yeah, you know, I think I, I wanted to wrestle 42 after my sophomore year, but it didn't really work out. I was going to ask that's you, what, what would have like, been your ideal I weight? I think Austin Gomez is making a great move, you know? going to Wisconsin exactly. 149 you know I, you know and there's a lot of kids man I could I don't want to name names but kids I know are going to college and I'm like hey man there's a lot of other colleges and 
And, and you don't have to wrestle D1, man. Just go and get your degree, man. And go wrestle 41 or 49, man. And But, you know, live it. But, you know, you still got to live it, you know, and still all do all the right things to wrestle that weight class. Yeah, I wanted to leave that for my uh, sophomore year, you know, because I remember my junior, you know, I just not – one day I was in my garage and I started looking at some of my brackets and I'm like – yeah, I was like 17 and one at 142. And I, oh man, I got, I was ranked the top one, two and 142. I go to 134. I cut back down. I'm like ranked six. And those guys were hammers, man. In that weight class, man. Dude, your brackets were insane. You had Zuniga, Marinelli, obviously brands. Everyone knows about those battles. And then, um, can't remember the guy's name from Penn state, a guy from Wisconsin. I mean, the big 10 was nasty. Oh, man, there. Mark Ferguson from Cornell. People don't know about that guy, man. Now he's a doctor. And I, sometimes I still talk to him on Facebook, but that guy was, a, I, man, I struggled against that guy, you know, and you know, he give everybody tough Truby matches and Truby. That's what I was thinking of. Right, man. You get, I mean, there was a lot of studs I had, man. And then I was at 42. I didn't really, I mean, kids were tough, but you know, I was doing all right, man. And, Think, oh, it's that kid. I I don't want. There's a kid from Missouri. I wrestled at 34. I shouldn't. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't want to say Smith, man. But you know, he had. I'm going to 142 and I'm all American that year. He was even ranked in the top 10 at 134. Dang. Goes up. It takes third or fourth. And the kid from Maryland, I beat. And I beat both those guys at the Midlands, and they have both placed at 42. You know. Right. So, I mean, for you to, to keep that down, because you figure you're, you're true freshman year, Big Ten Rookie of the Year, make it to Nationals, and then your sophomore, you take third. Again, this is a true sophomore. Take a third, which is like back then wasn't all that common. But by then, for you to keep this weight down, like you're coming out on Monday, you're talking 10 over, or you're talking way more than that to keep it under control throughout the year? I was 10 over the day before I was happy. <sighs> and I'm coaching at University of Chicago right now, and I'm telling the kids, they're talking about their way. I'm like, Wait, that's man, I'd be super happy. I was 10 over the night before. <laughs> so, you, know, you know, I probably could pull four or five wrestling, and then the next five, I just hop on the bike, you know, and I could tell you how much I lost by just by my sweatshirt with the sweat on it, you know. Oh my God, that sounds it's fun to talk about now. Nah, probably not fun for you, but it's just like looking back, that'd be so make the wrestling so miserable compared to like what you're used to. Or would you still get some fun out of it? No. You know, I mean, at times, I, I, I mean, bro, I think you mean, man. It was like, you know, I think what happened to me when you start cutting weight, you trying to start drifting away from wrestling too, man. Like, my, my, my job was making, you know, I started the battle of scale too much, man. I wasn't really ever concentrating on my wrestling, you know. Yeah. You know, I went up to junior. I was wrestling 142, and man, I was concentrating on wrestling again. And even if I had a close match, like, you know, a couple of tournaments, I never let it dwell on it, man. I was just like, hey, man, you know, I was a lot more confidence. I'm going to be in better shape next week. But, you know, I want to go down to 134. I had a close match. I'm like, I thought it was the end of the world, man. It's just, just my mindset was totally different because, you know, I knew I had to, you know, make that weight at 134. You know, and, and I struggled in school. I ain't no, you know, I, I, I was pretty severe learning disability. So I struggled in both. And it was hard to handle. That's why I really admire all those guys like David Taylor and, uh, you know, even like, I know those guys that like Yanni and uh, you know, all those guys that end up being four time national champ or anyway, a national champ that could handle all that, dude. I admire the hell out of those guys. Seriously. I mean, you think about a school like Michigan, it's it's basically Ivy League education. I mean, that had to be a pretty big shock coming from uh, public school back then to go to Michigan. You know, and I, I you know, something like my older brother was the first guy in college right now, really, you know, at the time, you know, and he's playing baseball at uh, this Marion College in Final Ag. And, you know, he just goes to school with 500 kids. You know, I go to Michigan. I didn't know Michigan was that great at academics. You know, I know Michigan because of football. I didn't even like Michigan, man. I'm a huge Notre Dame fan at the time. You know, I wanted to go to Notre Dame. You know, I, but I, I only schools I thought were great academic schools are like Harvard and Princeton, right? I didn't know like North Carolina and UCLA are unbelievable educational schools, you know? Right. So who all and, did you, know, you get looks for coming out of it? Because I, because he obviously Mark Johnson was in Iowa. He's an Illinois guy, but they had brands, so I don't know if they were calling you as much or, no. or who. Iowa State, Minnesota a little bit, Arizona State a little bit. Yeah, remember I never was really, never really broke out on the freestyle scene. I mean, I went to we called junior nationals at the time, you know, you know I went there three years, and never placed. The closest I ever placed was Greco my junior year. You know, and I go to, you know, the central, we call them centrals back then, you know, I would place, 
I mean, I won the, like when the AAU nationals, but that was nothing compared to the USA nationals. So I wasn't that heavily recruited, even though being a four time state champ. You know, Michigan was almost on a when they didn't want me, they want this kid to end up going to Miami, Ohio, and he said no to them. And then Mr. Griff, I don't know if you know, you know Jack Griffin. Yeah, from Northwestern. Yeah, his father like made a phone call for me. And I, so I said, you know, it's not like any of these schools are are that. I, I mean, in the hindsight, I probably should have just went to Illinois State. You know, those guys, you know, school wise, and this seemed like real great guys. But you know, two of the schools I want to get go to also was Purdue and Indiana. Indiana was my first choice, and I couldn't get in. I don't know why. I mean, I got into like, I mean, I probably applied at twenty schools. And I got an eighteen. You know, Purdue. And in the end, I guess Indiana didn't the state of Indiana didn't really want me to go to school down there. <laughs> I mean, Purdue was my first choice because, like, you know, Don Stuckley, this guy, you know, my my grade school coach, his brother was a national qualifier for Purdue. You know, lost to Chizino and ref decision the state finals. I mean, the guy, you know, I'm like, guy really helped me with wrestling. I'm like, I really wanted to go to Purdue and couldn't get into Purdue and couldn't get into Indiana. Kind of down the dumps. I ran into Mr. Griffin somehow and. I don't know. I go, yeah, I want to wrestle in the Big Ten, you know. And I don't know how Michigan came up. He made a phone call. Michigan called me. I went up there, came home, signed with Michigan. And is this before your fourth title or after? No, after. We couldn't sign until after. Worse. Got it. Okay. Man, it's just so crazy to think how different the recruiting process was back then versus it is now. You know, those kids are getting called as sophomores. Well, you know, nobody really, only two schools really recruited me. It was Illinois State. They came to my house, and Purdue always came to my house, you know, Jordan, you know. It was like, that's it. And then, you know, you know, like, you know I want to go to Purdue, could, couldn't get in. I know Indiana recruited me, you know, a little bit also, you know. They were pretty yeah. upset that I didn't end up going to Indiana. And they didn't want me to sign with Michigan, you know, McFarland didn't, it, but I know. I'm like, hey, man, what's going to happen? I can't get on it. I'm not going to have a scholarship, you know? You sit at home. Right. And when you were going out to the junior nationals on Team Illinois, were were any Illinois guys winning it and, and placing high back then, or was Illinois yet to hit their peak? You know, guys with Greco, yeah. You know, we had guys, Ben Morris was winning it, Sam the Gracie, Bam Bam, Pastelnik. All those guys were placing, you know, Jack Griffin. Man, did he win it at 23? I wish I had more of the, I don't want to give out any bad information, but yeah, you know, Sean taking second. Uh, I mean, there was guys, you know, there was a kid, uh, Dan Ricci, he was Greco, you know, a lot of Greco guys. Same, almost, you know, no one's always been good at Greco, you know. Yeah. But we're not as good as the kids are doing now, man. No way. Especially, I was just talking all over with my son, like when he was in high school, like, man, I, that's the most impressive. It's just, I probably delayed. 70s and early 80s that's probably some of the most impressive knowing my kids man i ever seen wrestle man yeah i mean think about that think about some of those names and then you know outside of illinois at the time guys like alan freed were coming through there and winning four of those things and that's was that your era as well i'm guessing about going to junior nationals that's, that's the same era i wrestled okay. alan freed. not there i wrestled him in college and i wrestled him in freestyle you know later on right that's good you know Oh, super good. I mean, he's he's another guy, you know, one NCAA title. And if it wasn't for brands, maybe a, a three, you know, a three timer. Um, well, you yeah. know, if people want to understand how good that guy was, because I remember one year I was at the US Open and I'm like, man, don't tell me how Freed's in this weight class at 130, 60s. Like, no, man, I'm going 149. I'm like, oh, all right. And then that's the year Pat Smith cut down to 149 and he beat Pat Smith. What? I mean, I didn't hear about that. I'm pretty sure. I'm, may I not? That's why I want to say too much facts. But I'm pretty sure. He <laughs> Dude, he was freaking insane. And you know, he tech followed the Brains Brothers at at Junior Nationals, and then you know, as you get to college, the gap gets a little bit narrower. But um, man, to go up like that and wrestle Pat Smith in his prime, crazy. Right, man. You know, Pat Smith. You know, is like one of the most unbelievable wrestlers I've seen. You know, since high school. And was that you know, all right? Yeah. It, I would be remiss without asking about you know you had two absolute brawls with Tom Brands and you've wrestled a lot of greats. Was it his pace or was it just was there something technically he was doing? I mean, when you look back on those battles, what sticks out to you? Oh, we wrestled more than like he really. The first time I ever wrestled was at Big Ten's my freshman at Northwestern. He gave it to me there, man. 
And then, uh, so the next time I end up wrestling is in, in Champaign. You know, I don't think my head was ever really, I never really think like, like I think my high school coach was always good with the mental game, you know? I never really yeah. thought my head was always on straight. I have, I don't know, ability wise, yeah, but never really kept myself in a match, you know, thinking right, you know? And now I watch a match, I'm like, I mean, I know I know a lot more about wrestling now than I knew then also, you know, but and there's a lot of things that I could have done, slow down the pace and work my underhook. You know, that's the stuff I go over, but I just, I wasn't thinking, you know. I just let the match get out of hand, you know. And that happens in sports all the time with kids, man. And I coach football, the same thing. Some games just get out of hand, even though the teams are even. It's just the mental game, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, man, he's got Dan Gable in his corner. And, and I want a good a guy end up being pretty, you know, knowing we're all at Royce Alger and, like, Man, those guys living in Iowa, man. We don't, you know, and people don't understand it, man. And, you know, like I was going back to like, you know, like, I, I mean, I like being somebody, man. You go to Michigan, you ain't a somebody no more, especially coming out of Chicago. And I like, you know, I, you know, this might sound arrogant, but man, I was in the newspaper. I liked it, man. I got a lot of, you know, it was crazy. And you go to Michigan, I win my first tournament. Nobody cares. Iowa, man, I like listening to those guys talk, man. They're like, big deal, man. You know, yeah. I like being a big deal, man. You know, I think those guys, just had, you know, mental. Everything was good, man. When I'm, you know, great coaches, Dan Gable, man. You can't ask for no way better, you know? I mean, especially think about, you know, after you won your first high school state title, anytime you walked in a tournament, they're on out. Everyone's pointing and looking. That's Joey Gilbert. They're whispering behind the scenes. You know, that, that had to be your reality from an early age on. Yeah. Right, you know, guys, you know. That's how it was, and you know, people were always talking. It was a lot different. If I'd be a little bit, I don't know how I would have handled it now with all this social media. You know, mostly it was just rumors. You know, when I was wrestling, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know so it wasn't like you know, and people ain't bashing me in the newspaper either. You know, as a wrestler in high school, they're always you know, you know. It's funny you say rumors. I was interviewing Reggie Wright for the Tony Davis documentary, and he was talking about you know Tony Davis and Steve Williams. He's like, it was all rumor this, rumor that. And finally, they're like, uh, you know, he finally met him at like, I don't know what tournament it was. He's like, bro, the rumors were true. And it's just kind of funny you say rumors because that's really not something people think about now. But back then, you know, no internet, you know, you had really no way of knowing what was going on. Well, you know, you know, it's crazy. Like, it's died down a little bit, but you don't understand, like, in the 70s and the 80s and in the heart, like, South suburbs, man, the South Town, we call it, is like, the wrestling's insane. Wrestling's big, man. People go watch wrestling. I mean, people actually enjoy wrestling, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. I think I think like you know I came from like a pretty good small wrestling environment, you know, and then to like Michigan is like, you know, it's like Iowa. I, you know, I was always people talk about wrestling. You know, my sister in law is from Iowa, Lone Tree. You know, right outside Iowa City. And like, you know, I talk to her dad all the time. He knows everything about Iowa wrestling. The guy not wrestled day in his life. I mean, he knows Iowa State people. He knows guys from Gilbert Bosco or like, you know, like crazy Cedar Rapids. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. crazy to me. You know. And you're saying but that's you know, how South Suburbs were for you back then? Yeah, in, in the newspaper and stuff. And you know, it was people cool, too. You know, Joe Williams, like, man, I always got to be in the newspaper, like, when he got to be in the newspaper, man. You know, people like, are you jealous? Like, hell no, man. I I'm, I, I get to be in the newspaper again. It's cool with me, man. <laughs> you know, you got to love it, man. And, you know, I expect the hell out of that guy, man. Great wrestler he is, you know. Oh, my God. Incredible. Yeah, because uh, every article you find with Joe Williams, it's like, you know, will he be the first four-timer since – you know, Joey Gilbert. And it wasn't, it wasn't too long after that when you were going through or when he was going through. And so, so when you were coming up, what were like, what were the big, uh, big kids tournaments that you guys would, would rally around on the South side? I think the main one uh, is a Panther tournament is just like a state tournament. It's not like that. It's funny. Cause I remember getting out of college and I got in the roughing and I remember roughing the Panther tournament. And it's like, Oh man, this ain't like the old Panther tournament. <laughs> but it ain't like the old tournaments either. Like the old tournament was just like every tournament was pretty serious, man. The Midwest Classic, you go there and you're all day, man. But you know, only one guy has a team. That's it. You know, you send, you know, what twenty two kids, I think maybe back in IKF. I can't exactly how many kids are in each weight class, but something like that. And that's it. That's all you got to send. You know. Yeah. So you had varsity back there, and that was a big deal with the spotlight coming out and shaking hands and. You know, and you wrestle pretty much all the same kids are going to wrestle down the state, and people traveled, you know. And we're lucky we didn't have to travel, you know, because of the good area we're in. Right. 
Yeah, I heard uh, another one that was thrown around was the War Horse. Yeah, the War Horse. Man, uh, I know I want. I know I won it once. Yeah, because like I remember I wrestled Saturday and Sunday, and I think the next day was the War Horse, and I know I got pinned in the finals. Got Steve it. Smurfs, he won't live it. Let me live it down. That guy, well, you know. <laughs> Like, but I was all sad if I won my first tournament the day before and I go wrestle again in another tournament. You know, I'm like, man, I remember standing up getting cradled. Man. But, now, were your parents, like, were they ones that were pushing you, driving you, or was it mainly self-driven for you? Oh, man. Uh, I just got off the phone with my mom. We just went over, like, every bracket almost in the state tournament. Girls, too. So, no, my mom is totally a wrestling person. No, nah, I mean, there's times like I, we, we, we went to California for my freshman year or vacation and I'm laying in my bed and my mom's kicking the bed. I'm like, you got to get up. Like, get up for what? You got to go wrestle in, you know, fresh, soft, freestyle state, you know? I'm like, oh, man, you know, oh, yeah, my mom pushed me. There's no doubt about it. But in a positive way, a fun way, but we're all we're having fun with it, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, I don't know how my mom even figured it out once. One time I lost this kid at Junior National. Somehow she knew he was wrestling in this. Hey, you turn in Lawrence, Kansas, and we drove all the way out there. So I could wrestle with the kid, you know. And like, no, we we're we're pretty intense about it. My mom still loves wrestling, man. We talk about it all day, man. Like first time I ever kid, like talk, you know, she's you know big Michigan fan right now, you know, you know because of Sean, and you know she likes you know, you know Mason Paris, probably her favorite wrestler right now. But you know, <laughs> but. Hey, it drives her nuts, but I'm like, Mom, you know, she knows how good Stevenson is, and you know. Yeah. And yes. that's cool, Gibbs, too. So I remember when he was a little kid on the Bulldogs, you know. It's pretty that's crazy, cool. but. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. He, he, he was an Illinois guy. He was a monster. That kind of, like, compared to his brothers, you know. His dad, you know, good people. Mm-hmm. Pretty interesting. You know, they can't drove all the way from. I think at the time they lived in Michigan City. I don't know exactly, but. Yeah. They'll come down, you know, going to. Yeah, my mom was like, my mom, you know, wrestling's big, man. Everybody wrestled in my family. You know, my dad wrestled in high school. You know, my sister wrestled. We made her wrestle at 27 years old, you know, after we seen the match in the Midlands. And next thing you know, she's in the, you know, the World Cup in Toledo wrestling, you know. And like, like so you yeah, said, though. My, my niece is wrestling in college. And, you know, so, you know, my son's coaching. You know, I was pretty excited, too, for my son. You're like, he's a guy that was one match away going down stage, but. You know, tonight he's going down there. He's coaching at St. Rita. You know, and, and, and he's all excited, man. He finally gets on the floor and finally see what's what's going on in that tunnel, you know. And he's jacked, you know. That makes me excited. I mean, that's what I love about the sport, you know. Somewhere yeah. you can always be a part of that tournament, you know. Never give up, right? That's the thing. Man, it's a, it takes a while to go down there as a fan if you, if it didn't end the way you wanted. It took me about 10 years to finally, you know, swallow swallowed my pride and get back in there because it's just so much tied to it at the time you know you don't know how you're going to feel when you go back so like when you do go back though and you walk in it's awesome well you know exactly and i think my younger brother was that way you know and a lot of people don't understand like you know he went up and tried to you know knock off joe williams you know and you know things you know i'm taking fourth but you know i think he's all excited you know i think he wants to get his chance to be in the grand march you know and why not? You know, it's, it's good experience, man. You wish that for everybody, man. That's the experience that, man, like, as an athlete, as a coach, and pretty, you know, to me, I was there once as a coach, and I think I enjoyed it more as being an athlete, you know? Yeah. It was super, you know, it was great, great, great atmosphere, you know, like I say. Now, when you were, when you were coming through it, you won your first one, you beat Fader, are you someone who's, like, like, consciously thinking, I want to be the first four-timer, or did it kind of just come, and next thing you know, you're, you're about to win your fourth? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, after I one of my freshman year, I want, you know, I felt, hey, yeah, I want to be next four time, you know, you know, it'd be the second one, you know, overall, first one in double A. Right. right. Rudiger the first one in Providence. Yeah, I wanted it, you know. But you know, when me going in the freshman year, I think that way, no, man, I went up and I wrestled the freestyle. And I got beat up, man, by a lot of kids. You know, I mean, me and Fader had a 25, 23 match in Prairie State games for third and fourth. Prairie State games. I haven't heard that in a while. I forgot about yeah, that tournament. Man. 
So even after you won it as a freshman, you're going out there, you're still scrapping, taking losses in the freestyle scene. You're still on the come up essentially. Right. Yeah. I never, I, I won. I mean, I, I guess it's called cadets right now, but I won that freestyle. But I never won junior. I never won, you know, the junior. I lost one year. I took fourth. That might have been the last year. I think I took second as a freshman, fourth as a sophomore. Junior, I didn't wrestle because I went overseas and wrestled, trained in Germany for like a month, you know. And then like? I came back and then I just wrestled the mini tournament at junior, at, you know, at the junior, at junior nationals. That's crazy to me because now you would think an IHSA champ, you know, the high school champ would would win freestyle tournament. Not easy, but you definitely to be the favorite. But that's just how competitive Illinois was back then on that junior scene. Oh, real competitive. But, you know, and too, like I didn't have no – not until my junior year, we really had a place to work out. You know, like Coach Dog, Dog, Dogger from St. Lawrence and Coach Javay opened up the Maris and their and their St. Lawrence wrestling room to us. And that's probably the best year I did in freestyle when we got to practice a couple times a week. You know, and they had some structure from those guys. We never had. I was pretty much my training pretty much was just running around the block, man. You know, running around the block making way. I never was in wrestling going to these tournaments. I was on the mat. I just was putting my classes on, cutting grass in the back of my dad's truck cutting weight you know what pretty much doing that kind of stuff they're not like like uh lay he's not opening up the room in like june and july to get some like open mat workouts in no but not in the high school samberg was even like that back then wow man you know bulldogs is... the bulldogs which bulldogs people going to bulldog bill now it's too wrestling room back then it wasn't it was just mostly like a field house you know right yeah we had nowhere to once in a while, we could wrestle at the high school, but it wasn't like, you know, other schools. And I mean, the only guys were really probably doing it at the time was probably Providence. And then when Coach Poles went over to Sandberg, you know, mm-hmm. that's when those guys started to do it. You know, I would, I would go up to Barrington, you know, and work out with like Chuck Braid and John Sainer and Ben Morris and, you know, Gomez sometimes, you know, and we go up there. We try to find anywhere we could wrestle, you know. I had a little mat in my basement too, you know. This guy gave me from like Tony Park High School, coach, you know, my coach in grade school, but we didn't really have no full time training. Did you guys like have the Yosemite Sam Wrestling Club open up, you know? And where was that based out of? St. Lawrence and Maris. Oh, that's the one you mentioned. Okay. Yeah. Well, now that, that team was full studs, man. You know, so it, was, it was fun too. Is that the Ironman era? What is, is he going through there, Mike Ironman? He's younger. He's my, you know, he, he's the other guy I wrestle my brother all the time. He's a little bit younger, so he wasn't on that team. It was mostly just high school kids then. Got it. And, uh, you know, back in the day, Bill Wick would open up the Mount Carmel room on Sundays. Would you guys ever go up that far and get in there on some of those? No, Mount Carmel kids were back then. They were coming to Maris. Maybe they probably were opening up the room, but I just remember working out with the mountain. Because, like, you know, like, you know, Mike Manganiello was one of a good friend of mine, so he was on our team. We had a lot of Mark Carmel. Because we were old to be, we had practices, too. So it was weird. No, we never went to Mark Carmel. Yeah, Oglesby's the man. I sat down with him about two months ago. For yeah, the, he's a good guy. I just seen him last week at sectionals. Nice. Yeah. he's a, He was a coach, obviously, you know, coach at Mount Carmel back then. And uh, it's just been fun to kind of go down memory lane. Because, you know, when I was a kid coming up, you had Israel Martinez as a five-timer and I kid a BF, but you know, everyone talked about this kid, Tony Davis, and I really never knew how good he was. But then I also didn't realize how insane his story was until I started doing this documentary. And through that, I've got to, you know, talk to all these guys again, a, a few of which you mentioned now. So, well, you know, I think when you're talking, uh, oh man, the Harvey coach, Quint, Quint, yeah, you know, it, it does. I remember that was talking about rumors. I remember hearing some of that stuff about him after Marcamo losing, you know. I didn't know. That's crazy, man. I mean, but what a great story for the kid bouncing back and what he's accomplished half of that. And he was an unbelievable athlete, man, wrestler, you know? Yeah, unbelievable. And uh, and you talk about rumors. Again, another rumor I heard growing up, because my older brother went to Rocky, uh, you know, the the William Gay, Sean Bormet, and you, you know, your junior year, everyone from the outside looking in, looks like it's going to be you versus Bormet in one of the best matches ever. Is that something where you were like kind of consciously focusing on, hey, I'm going to have Bormet in the finals? Yeah, for sure, man. 
you know, we're all, it was always competing, man. And then, cause we, you know, we never wrestle each other, but we would wrestle some of the same kids, you know, mm-hmm. feel like, Hey man, I'm trying to beat this kid in 30 seconds or something like that, you know, and like, you didn't beat him in like a minute or something, you know, right. just like stuff like that. You know, you know, guys are high school kids are I'm like, Oh yeah, man. And I'm like, shoot, I pick it up a little bit, you know? And, you know, and I lost to Sean in freestyle that year, like the summer before. And I, mean, I knew the kid was good, man. And his crazy ankle pick and, you know, and what coach polls and they got with that wrestling room they had, you know, the kid was ready to go. But, you know, here's the thing is the funniest thing people don't understand about that year is that there's this Rabbit's High School brought in this kid named Robert Lochner from Oklahoma to beat me. You know, and the kid came up from Oklahoma. And then I ended up beating him in sectionals, and he ended up wrestling Sean. But Sean ended up beating him early. So I don't know if the kid came up to beat up both of us or what. I don't understand. But Sean beat him six to nothing. I mean, the kid ended up taking fifth in state. And he only had two losses, one to me and one to Sean. So he was actually not a bad wrestler. So, you know, I always think that's kind of crazy. Like, So he you know, was like from crazy. Oklahoma? Yeah, he was from Oklahoma. Wow. You put yeah, him into that meat grinder? Like, good God. Because William Gay was well, undefeated, too. I'm like, Everybody got Sean, you know, like they don't, but I don't know whether, or they thought this guy was going to be both of us, you know, but I mean, the kid was a decent wrestler, you know? Yeah. I mean, it was uh, a good wrestler. And were you, them, what's that? Were you watching the William Gay Bormet batch or were you backstage when that all went down? I was wrestling. But the place and, went berserk. Yeah. You know, I missed, I mean, cause I was wrestling, you know? Yeah. You know, and I was, uh, you know, but you know, William Gay, man, you know, I wrestled that guy, you know, and also in college and like, but there's one thing, man, like you can't, you're never out of a match, man. If I just kill like what, you know, like I try learning my dad taught like, man, you got, you got to learn something, some stuff that you got to pull out your butt at once, you know, you got to be a gunslinger and you got to watch those guys, man. William Gay tossed me one time in Vegas, man. I'm like, you got to watch it, man. You know, you got to learn stuff, you know. You got to keep wrestling, man. Reminds me of Elijah Roberts and that neck wrench he used to throw, man. Like, those Rocky All guys, right. they would they would be there with something, man. They would be nasty with it, too. Well, you know, it's funny because I got in, like, later on I got in jiu-jitsu and MMA and we go to Japan and, like, these guys, man, they're just, like, just go for one thing, just keep going for it until they get there, man. Where, you know, like, I was fighting this guy in Japan, and he just kept going, bam, for the ankle lock. And, you know, he'd take punishment, and then they finally got it. You know, these guys would just go for it. You know, that's it. Yeah. You know, a lot of people use that kind of stuff in grappling, man. People don't understand, man. They're just going to keep fighting until they get that move. They're going to, you know, live and die by the sword, you know. <laughs> and, man, you've been in some high-level tournaments. You were at ADCCs once or twice? Three times. Three times. I mean, that's yeah. for the, the non jujitsu listeners on the podcast that's the world series of brazilian jiu-jitsu it happens every two years or every three years something like that and every two every two years how did mm-hmm. you initially get the get the nod to go over to that well we were fighting in uh back in the day me and my brother and you know a bunch of us from around here were deciding to call hook and shoot and uh they and they were end up doing the Abu Dhabi trials you know down there in evansville indiana and I so I get there and then the guy's like, oh, I'm gonna have like the 170 trial. But my brother was in the 170 trial, you know. And then they're like, Well, uh, what do you want to do? I'm like, Well, isn't there like a 143, you know? And he's like, Yeah. And it, you gotta remember at this time, man, I'm way I, I was a little heavier, and the guy's like, You're gonna make 143. I'm like, Yeah, just put me in, man. I didn't have the trial, they just put me in as an alternate. <laughs> I, I went as an alternate all the way to Abu Dhabi. You know, and then all of a sudden, the guy's like, I'm about to go out and get something to eat. They're like, no, man, you got to go cut weight. You're in the tournament. Something happened with some guy's visa. So you get in there, you know. So, you know, I get in and end up doing pretty well. I end up taking third, you know. And then, you know, other times, I both won matches. We lost in the quarters. But, Who you know, did you tap were... that first year? Who was was it Pequeno? First I, didn't match ta- you... I just beat my points. But that was like your first round draw, though, right? That was my second. Dude. That was my second match. You know, um, what's the kid's name? I can't remember the first guy's name. 
you know, but then I lost Osaka in the semis, you know. And then, you know, Hoyler won it. Right. Right. And so, it, man, I'm always, it's just fun, fun. You know, I think, you know, a second year, as a, you know, it was just a fun tournament to be around those guys, man. I love grappling, you know. That's what comes to mind when I think of like your, your like where you're talking about Tinley Park, Orland Park. Those guys are just scrappers, man, and just love to fight. And whether it's a wrestling match or an ATCC match, the fact that you were going in there, I mean, and how much like straight up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu training had you had at that point in the, you know, in the gi? I know it's a no gi tournament, but traditional BJJ well, training. I saw it probably started like in like 97, 98, Jim Joukowsky. There's a guy, you know, Sean, he's, Sean Borman, he's a battle this kid always. I mean, he actually wrestled him in the state finals at 145 from St. Lawrence, you know. And he, I ran to him. I used to go lift at this USA gym, you know, this hardcore bodybuilding gym. And I ran to him and he's like, hey, man, because, you know, the USC's are going on at the time, you know. He's like, hey, this guy, Joe Cortez, got a jiu-jitsu place in Midway, you know. I I go, hey man, I'm, I'm down. I'm like, I want to go tell my brother we, we want to do a jiu-jitsu so bad. This guy knows jiu-jitsu. We get there, and it's like it's in Midway, you know, like by the I mean, right next to the airport. And I'm like, we get there and uh there's no mats. There's just like looks like there used to be a, a hairstyle on this place, you know. <laughs> and then the guy blows off these like blue mats, you know, and us being wrestlers, like, what what's going on here? Yeah, like we make fun of these blue mats, tumbling mats, right? We would never want to wrestle on tumbling mats, and that was it, man. And but yeah, we remember it would be sad. It was like Matt Hughes being there training, you know? Wow, it was really that guy was Joe was the only dude that really was doing jujitsu, man. And we had a bunch of killers in our wrestlers, and the guy was like, "Oh man, you know." It was pretty cool, but we had to be really quiet. We couldn't make noise because we couldn't make. We well, got the neighbors or. <laughs> the neighbors complain, and I'm like, yeah, there's Matt Hughes, and like Jim, all these guys, and like, <laughs> how am I not gonna make noise? These guys are killers, man. When did uh cl- the great cl- Clay Guida start rolling in there? Well, I think it's more with, with Clay, his brother. So then later on, you know, I'm like, I was competing, and I'm like, hey, man, you know, I think it's time for like, we never had nowhere to train. Like, I had no, you know, I fought BJ Penn running at oh, I did, we went to the YMCA. Yeah, I had no, that's the other time we had no place to train. <laughs> my god so i actually you know i was i was doing abu dhabi working like in a, you know in a factory you know i got kid raising in and then I'd come home hang out with my kids and then i go cut weight all i did is cut weight you know for those matches but, but so i'm like later on i'm like hey man like i got it's time for me to just open up a school so we found a garage in mokina where i live now super small Bought a mat off of Joe Gortia for like 300 bucks, threw it down in there. All of a sudden, man, I pulled one day to practice, there's this camouflage van. And this is when the sniper guy's going around, the whole sniper thing going on, like back in the East Coast. I don't know if you remember that at all. No. <laughs> like, God, the guy must be working out with us, man. And it's Jason Guida, you know, and somebody told him about us. And and, and first he told me from Johnsburg, and I'm like, man, I kind of know Johnsburg. I'm like, I go, wait, man, that's like, you hop over the border there. He's coming down from Wisconsin all the way down to Will County, man. And I'm like, this guy is like crazy. And he ended up being a cool dude. And then, so he was fighting. And then, you know, there was, he was fighting his brother, like Clay was saying before on your show, you know, and like, and I'm fighting in a strip club. And then, you know, after that, Clay just had, you know, fighting with us, you know, training with us, man. And, and it was, you know, what, how awesome it turned out. I mean, you know, Clay just sent us a picture and like, he beat Bart. That was like the fight that changed everything for him, you know, up in the Crystal Lake area. And like, but you know, Clay's a you know special athlete, man. And and there's another guy, man. I don't did Clay ever make it down state? I don't know. I don't know why I don't know this. No, he didn't. No, I don't think so. But, but how's but that's why I love like how excited when he's coaching for Montana, he gets you know, that's how great the state championship. I don't think people like that dude's jack, man. Here's this guy. Is as as famous one of the most famous fighters in the world, but man, I do still sighting going out to the state tournament, man. And then you, if you're a kid, you don't see that and how sighting that is. Like this guy is the best, fight, one of the top fighters in the world, been all over the world fighting, and that guy still gets geeked, man, just being down in San Lee Hall, man. That's that's pretty cool, you know. That's special, and he does, man. He he still just loves it. You know, he'll be he'll be driving around, he'll he'll take a picture of his steering wheel, and he has a wrestling change my life sticker on his camper steering right. wheel 
And it's like he's traveling, like you said, all over the world. And you know, every post, it's wrestling his life. And yeah, like you said, when he's coaching at Montini, going down there with the crazy hair. And, you know, it's just like that's the kind of energy that's at this tournament. Yeah, big time, man. It's cool, man. And I think kids got to realize that, man. It's like and, and never downplay it, man, because it's a big time in your life. Huge. It's so exciting. And, you know, I don't. You know, the three classes, it's great, more more availability. But, man, back when it was two, when there wasn't seeding and there wasn't true wrestlebacks, just the stakes in every round were just cutthroat. Well, the quarterfinals would be Friday night, or like just like the NCAA quarterfinals. They're nuts. That's when the upsets came. I remember that's the first time I ever really seen, like, Matt Lackey, man. You know, I just that's when I kind of started to go back and watch wrestling. I'm like, man, who's this kid? And he had blue. Like, who did he beat, man? Uh, Man, well, I, I don't he wrestled one of the twisters, I feel. I don't exactly, but I'm like, man, look at this kid. This kid just upset this guy. And I, I don't know if he ended up losing his next match. Well, I mean, he ended up being a three-time state champ, right? Out of Moline, yeah. but yeah. I mean, this is those are those are, I think those are more the most relaxed line. That's what I was telling my son. I'm like, hey, what time is the quarterfinals? And I was telling man back and it was just nuts, man. It was and just free this time. Both you divisions know, were in there too. Yeah, double A and A at the same time. Now they don't do that. You know, other thing too, not not, the, but it's it was at night, and you know, a lot of the parents already had a few drinks by then too. Oh yeah, you know, people. I mean, I'm, I mean, that's wrestling. That's how, That's the wrestling we grew up, man. I was on the Bulldogs. We went stay. We get kicked out of the hotel. The parents get kicked. You know, what I mean, people. Oh. I mean, I'm not gonna. I mean, maybe other suburbs or other town. Like that's how it is around here, man. You know, those guys are pretty tanked up when they're walking through those quarterfinals. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, they've been at brothers since one o'clock. Getting, exactly getting getting like, looped up <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the uh the, the hotel lobby party from the night before just ended <laughs> and you got that right man you know what I mean? like i just remember man going to, back to the marriage and providence imagine people punching each other and the parents fighting each other in the stands and, yeah you know we had the same instance man we had a crazy instance i was wrestling we're jelly at central was ranked number one in the state and we had those guys on the road and that's when we had ties and a 185 pounder ended up tying the kid and I heavyweight, you know, had to go against Shaw, one of the best kids in the state. Kid took second area for central. And our fam ran out of the stands, punched the ref in the head. You know, <laughs> that wasn't tough back then, man. You know, man, I'll never, you, you, you were probably at this for uh, when this happened, the Geneseo Bi-State tournament. Do you remember when, uh, John Starzik and Nate Moore from Iowa City West are wrestling, and their parents no, I, got into a scrum in the stands. Right, man. That's right before I started to go there with Marianne. Got it. Because my high school coach, Jesse Montez, and his boys are wrestling this weekend. You know, best of luck to the Montez brothers. He was uh, my assistant coach, but he's also a cop, and he had to go up there and break it up. And like, to your point, everyone was uh, was pretty tanked up at that point. You got that right, man. Especially <laughs> the Geneseo fans, man. I remember – Man, you know, Geneseo is a great wrestling town, but man, it's, it's a football town too. Huge. And I'm at Marion, you know, Marion right around the, right around then, beat them in the semifinals, I think. And I don't think they're going to ever let it down, man. So I had a kid in the finals that you know, Geneseo, they were all over. And then we had to wrestle Geneseo kid. I'm like, man, these guys want to kill us here. <laughs> they almost let the football go, will they, man? They, so I still remember it, man. There's probably still some old timers up there talking about it. Man, they love football in that town. I mean, they love wrestling too, but football is They love football. Cool. Man, they love it. And, uh, you know, growing up, all I heard about was how Mike Allscott from Joliet Catholic ran all over us. And anytime he would be on, anytime you were at a bar <laughs> and he was on the on the TV, someone would talk about it. And it's like, let it go, man. They couldn't, though. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was a beast. Yeah, but that's cool, man. You got you to love those towns, man. You yeah. Know, that feels, that's a cool town too, man. Going out and hanging out with a lot of those people, drinking at the bars there after during that term. It's fun, man. It is fun. And like, you know, when like kind of what we're alluding to is it just it seems like people weren't as serious back then as they are now. Now kids are like basically professionals when they're in fifth grade. You know, they're living the life of like like a, a businessman, basically working out all the time. When you were in the thick of your high school season, were you doing like the extra workouts or were you just doing the afternoon practice? And what was your edge back then? Nah, it was like night to night, you know. You get up, it was night out, and then you went home at night, you know. Yeah. But, but you know, I, I was lucky because, like, my older brother is a workaholic, man, and anything he does, man, and he does, you know, he just came, he was just at the 16th, 
was it the 16th hole of the night? Wait, this is out in Arizona. I don't know if you watch golf. Oh, yeah, the Waste Management yeah, Open, the 16th hole. He's a golf guy. He's like golfing every day, man. It's a, so, you know, I just took my brother's lead, you know. He's a fanatic, man, you know. And like, so we got up and we ran and we left it at school and our coach will open it, you know. And then, then it just started to catch on every year, you know. Like, you know, my buddy Jim Ferguson, you know. You know, he's, you know, you know, he kind of took the reins after my brother, you know, you know, he's an NCAA qualifier for Rutgers, you know, he's a guy that wrestled at Andrew, went to junior college, went to Rutgers, won a couple of matches in the NCAAs, you know, you know, he's like one of the best, you know, financial advisors, but, but, you know, I was always been a rookie to be around that. So yeah, we, we had to work out in the morning, man. And this is five days a week or like every other day, if you, if you could think every back. day, every day, man, I don't just get up, throw us in the car and drive us to school, man. I mean, sometimes you could run to school. It was nice out, you know, like before the season, maybe. But that's still a good few miles away. But yeah. And let me ask you this: going into your senior year, February nineteen eighty nine, you know, state tournament happens. Friday, you got the match of the morning. You got the quarters at night. You advance to the semis, and you got this cat Schaefer waiting for you, who was the returning state champ at a weight below. Knowing you had him and then your historic fourth, you know, four state title the next day, were you someone who could get to sleep that night or were you up all night just kind of thinking through the matches? Well, that was that. It was the same day as the state finals back then. Could we wrestle? Right. Cause so Friday night, you got the semis in the morning and then the finals that night on Saturday. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm a. I, I don't know if I was up all night, but yeah, it's always on my mind, man. And I, I'm that person too. It's one of my worst. I'm, you know, I'm an overthinker at times, you know. Mm-hmm. But I think, like I said, you know, my coach and my family, I had a lot of good support. I, you know, I, I had a lot of good coaches, man. Had, you know, Coach Lee and Jim Harrell, and like even this guy, Coach Crow, is huge influence on me. He only got to coach me a couple times, Coach Crow, but huge influence about, you know, like you know, just being intense, man. You know, and like not taking anything from nobody, man. This guy's, you know, ex vet, and, you know, God bless his soul, he passed away. But, you know, he's like, oh, man, you know, I had a good support system, man. So I relaxed, you know. And I was ready to go, man. And, you know, and I, and I was ready to get it over with. And I know this kid, I should be tough as heck, man. Tough as heck. You know? And here's a crazy thing, dude. I remember, you're talking about, I remember getting off the mat my quarterfinals. I would go watch his, uh, his quarterfinals, and the kid tosses him on his back. Because, like, people, I, I mean, I don't think anybody really understands. Like, I never really ever wrestled anybody in the state finals I was supposed to wrestle in the state finals. You know, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, the guys yeah, are yeah. ranked second mostly. And he was ranked second, but we had his first time. I probably ever re- wrestled a kid that was ranked second in the state tournament, and I wrestled him in the semis. Yeah. You know, and he went out and took me down, and then, you know, I stood up and got in you know, scramble situation. I'm putting him on his back, you know. I heard, I was watching the broadcast of the 89 state finals and Rob Sherrill was talking about that. And he's like, this happens like once every five years. And, you know, I, in uh, at assembly hall where two dudes will meet like that. And then it's as electric as it, as it, as everyone thought. And, you know, you pinned the dude, but you know, for you to even be taken down back then must've been, must've been a huge deal. Maybe the only time that year or in any year you had been taken down. No, I was taken down. I, I don't know why. This kid from Romeoville took me down that year. And then I'm like, oh, man, you know. But, <laughs> but you know, I'm, but I, I'm a, I am at times an over-aggressive wrestler, man. I'm not that hard to take down at times because I'm really, you know, going for that takedown. You know, I'm putting myself out there, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that really bothered me ever getting taken down. I'm not one of those people, like, and I try to, that's how I coach. I'm like, just get up. Hey, man, I. I mean, I take brands down twice in a row, and then well, I was in trouble, man. I shouldn't have. But <laughs> hey, man, like, you know, I'm like, I didn't know. We didn't, that's the th- best way to go, man. You're never out of the matches, but you know, there is a lot of coaches that harp on the oddest things, like, oh man, you couldn't, you got taken down, and you're like, coach, well, I'm 40, you know, like whatever, you know, like some coaches just harp on the wrong stuff, right? But you know, the Schaefer match, yeah, man, is like, it was early, it was going after Wayne's, you know, I was just like, you know, I just want to get it over with, man. Mm-hmm. Cause like uh, my sophomore year, uh, man, uh, shoot. I let me see. I I gotta get the guy's name exactly right. Here. Wait, 
No problem. No problem. Take your time. Yeah, Mike Keenum, you know. Yeah, wrestling for North. Why shouldn't he just do the year before at 132? He's ranked, I wasn't even ranked number one my sophomore year. He was ranked number one. You know, you know he gets pinned in the quarters. He's undefeated. I mean, he's dominating people all year, just cheating him, you know. And he uh, loses to, uh, you know, then he like, I mean, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure he got pinned. Yeah, you know, then. Oh, well, you know, the guy he got pinned by is Tim Chapman. You know, and I, Galesburg. I like tough. My dad told me about Tim Chapman my whole life growing up. He was from Galesburg. He was tough. Oh, no, this Tim Chapman was from Joliet Central. Okay. That's what Michigan State. I mean, I, I had a pull. I was losing to him in a conference finals. He's in my conference. and I mean, but the kid was dangerous, too, man. He was the first guy to really do the cement mixer. I, you know, I've never really seen it before, and he's cement mixed the kid. But Tim was tough, man. He's multiple state placer, wrestled at Michigan State, coaches yeah. the force now. So, okay. but you know, then like, uh, because like my freshman year, I was full wrestle with Dennis Duchesne, and he ended up losing, you know, to this kid from uh, Tony Marshall, whatever, from like Jolly Catholic, where he probably beat the kid a couple times a year because they were in the same conference, you know. Mm-hmm. So I didn't wrestle him, you know, in junior, everybody knows I was to wrestle Sean, and that didn't happen. And then my senior year, that's the first time I really wrestled somebody. Schaefer, yeah. And then take it, you know, you get it, get the win in the semis that morning, and then you got all day leading up to the finals. And yeah, obviously you get it done in the finals your senior year. Yeah, I got to wrestle Stan Valley and a good guy, man. You know, kind of became friends with him through the summer and freestyle and still friends with him now. Tough kid, yeah. man. He wrestled Northwestern too. Dang. See, that's that's just so many, so many studs back then. Mm-hmm. And I just want to go back to one thing you said before we before we sign off. You had a coach who was like a, a Vietnam War vet, and he, what was his philosophy like that you, re, you really took to heart? Well, I, I was thinking about there. There's a you know you got people don't understand like back in my day, Thornton and Thornwood and Thornwood they were studs teams. Dude. They were solid. I can't remember ever really going to, to a dual meet back then and really seeing a forfeit. Nobody really ever forfeited. You got to remember these teams. You know, you got, Thornton's got great wrestling history, so I'm wrestling this kid. And it was my freshman year, and I coached late. I don't know why he wasn't there, but Coach Crow had to take over the match. And uh, and uh, and, and this kid I'm wrestling, I'm not going to lie. My brother and I wrestled him at 190. I don't know how the kid made. He was got to be like 6'5", 126 <laughs> pounds. And then my brother and I wrestled him later, my you know, older brother at 119. I don't know how this kid made. Wait, why well, remember, man, like, it was a pretty intense dual meet. And I kind of was giving it to the kid. And I, and I probably gave a little bit extra after the match, you know. Like I wasn't supposed to, you know, but it was like tense, man, right? I mean, I walk off and I see the coach come over. And I'm like, man, I'm in trouble. He's like, that's what I love, man. That's why, you know, it was like, that's the way you got to be. Never back down, man. You know, that guy pushed you. I don't care what happens. And, and you know, and, 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 you know, and like I said, you know, I have pretty good, you know, severe, like learned disability. And that guy took, he took me on a wing in high school and really watched out for me too. You know, even though he was never, he was, he was a football coach for a while. And, then, you know, and I'm not, but. But he, but anything, anytime I was in a class, senior leader, he was just, you know, a guy I talk about intensity, man. I think in high school I had a good level with Coach Lay and Jim Harrell and all these guys, man. I had like probably like a coach for everything, you know. So it was great. And that's a perfect segue to to wrap this up because I wanted to have you give a message to all the the coaches and wrestlers listening because I know that you know the Downers Grove South team listens to this podcast. So uh, Coach K over at Tinley Park, Andrew, now, and you know, there's a lot of Illinois high schools that listen to this podcast. You know, like. For those kids going in, it's their first year. They're excited to be there. That's all well and good. But, you know, I think just your 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 Vietnam War coach, when you're referencing, like, he probably would have gone in there with, you know, take no prisoners, you know, don't put anyone on a pedestal. You know, is that kind of his approach and the message you give to the guys driving down to Champagne right now? No, oh, exactly. You're exactly right. That's how it was. Like, don't back down to nobody, man. Like, just go and force your will on them. And, you know, that was the, the best thing I could say, too, and, Cause, hey man, one match at a time, like I'm saying, man, I never wrestled the kid, the right guy. You know, the guy was supposed to be in the state finals. So you can't look ahead. You stay what you're doing and just stay on your course and let it go. Let your course take, you know, control. I mean, you control your course, man. It's one match at a time, you know, and that's the best way to look at it. And yeah, right. Just go out there and say, hey, you know, something, go out and score points and have fun and show off because there's a good chance you're never going to get a wrestle in front of 10,000 people ever again. You know, you you earn you earn to 
you earn those plows. But all that all the time you put in, all these years, you you don't want all those people keeping eyes on plowing you after those matches, and you earn it. Don't take no shit from anyone. Enjoy it no and yep. have fun. Yep. Joey Gilbert, it's been a pleasure, man. An Illinois legend. Thank you so much for taking time to us on the eve of, of the big dance, baby. I get chills even saying it. All right, man. Thanks for having me, man. It was an honor to be on your show. Wrestling fans, freestyle season is just around the corner. And if you want to wear the same singlet that Kyle Day, Yanni D, and Vito wore at the 2021 Olympic Team Trials, you can do that now by going to SpartanCombat.com and shopping their extensive list of freestyle singlets, and specifically the U.S. Trials Limited Edition Singlet Combo. Check it out now on SpartanCombat.com.